Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Genius Network where I introduce you to some of the greatest people I've had the privilege of meeting on my journey as an entrepreneur. If you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button below and we can stay together and progress in the future. So today we've got a special guest. His name is Mr. Patrick John Killian, the gent you can see on the screen right now. This guy is from the valleys of Wales, similar to me, but the difference is this guy gets flown all over the world, even to Vegas, to paint the likes of Mike Tyson, Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor, Anthony Joshua, you name it, this guy's done it. So without further ado, please introduce yourself today, Mr. Patrick John Killian. Thanks, man. That was a, that was a big uh, introduction. No worries, bro. You deserve it. <laughs> very, very, very kind. Yeah, all good, you mate. You good, yeah? Yeah. So basically, go. what I want to do is just tell everyone how me and you come across meeting each other. Like, we have mutual friends with, like, Cody Davis and his family and Little Joe and the Calzaggies and stuff like that. And then we started connecting on Facebook. And this is the whole point of the network point that I want to point out to everybody else. It's so, yeah. so important just to connect with like-minded people. Because I remember a few years ago, me and you were sat in Frankie and Benny's when we had some momentum building in our careers. And we just spoke to each other. And we was like, where are we going to be in like three, four years time? And we said that. And now look at you. You're literally just smashing it, bro. It was a good conversation, mate. Very inspiring for me as well. I mean, seeing you as well, the way you would come through and, and what you're up to yourself. Yeah. And um, yeah, just good to connect. It's really important, you know, having those people around you, I think. And, and, and meeting up and connecting and net, networking has been massive for me. You know, in my in my um, short time that I've been doing this, really. I mean, I've been painting all my life, but I think that um, as I as I get older, you sort of realise that the people you meet. There's a brilliant saying by um, Steve Jobs that you can you never connect the dots going forward. You can always connect the dots looking back, and that's really that's really true because a lot of things have happened in my in my uh, doing this for little things just little things and I think well how did I oh I, I, I got that opportunity because I met that guy a few years back and it's really interesting those little those little things you know so powerful and then how you it is powerful and, and you don't really think you don't think about it until later on in life you know how those dots connect absolutely man so let's talk about the start of the dots connecting let's talk about you how, how you started your career we'll talk about what you're doing right now and what you have done in a sec but let's just for the for those that don't know you tell us a little bit about yourself you like you're, you're an artist you're inspired by boxing how did it all come about yeah well i well i uh, i went uh, i left school the only thing i was really good at i, I wasn't an academic person in school I, I was i was okay you know but I, I i had a good bunch of friends around me but I was just, I was just good at art, to be yeah. honest. That was my, and I was pretty good at sport. But um, you know, I left school, and most of my friends went to college. So I, you know, I just thought, well, you know, I'll, I, I left with an A. I had an A in GCSE in art, and I thought, well, that's my, that's my thing, you know. Yeah. I thought I'll just, I'll just do. I did a local art and design course, a local college. And it went on from there, really. but I had box. I started boxing around that time as well at 16. This is quite late to box, but I started at 16, and it, I just fell in love with boxing. What so inspired I, you I to used, go from art to boxing? Well, I loved it since as a young kid watching it with my dad. I, I loved it as a young kid. I just never had the guts to start it, um, and it was just one of those things, you know. One thing led to the other, and I, I, I started going to my a, 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 a local fella, his, his garage, actually. Did you have any Dennis fights? Rogers. Did you have any Yeah, yeah, yeah about 45 senior fights, all senior levels. I didn't actually start until I was, I didn't get my first fight until I was 18. Wow. And actually, Joe, Joe Kaz, I was on the same, on the bill that I was my amateur debut. He was on the uh, undercard. Uh, sorry, he was on the car. I was on the undercard. He was on the main, um, the main bill in Newbridge Rugby Club. Um, but you know, uh, it just went from there. So the in, the inspiration of boxing and the painting obviously mixed together. Yeah. So that was a real passion of mine, you know, to sort of bring them together. But and it, it just looks like went on from there. 
it looks like your network though has been strong your whole life like like associating with like the likes of joe like we'll say this because we're welsh but when you actually think about what that man's achieved in his career it, it is unbelievable and to be surrounded it's by those true. Uh, it's, very, it's very true and probably you know and i did i did funny you should say that because i did i did go to see enzo his dad a couple of times he's, yeah. he's died now love him uh, rest in peace but you know I did go and see Enzo and, and I did very early in my career I, I remember going up and showing um, I'd given Enzo like a <laughs> a couple of questions and, and I asked him you know how, how much would you pay for something like this would you have something done like this and I remember and he, and he gave me a little bit of advice as well because he was a maverick Enzo very much his own person very much his own thing and yeah. he did say to me, one of, one of his things, he said to me, he was, look, you need to be different. Do something a bit different. So, well, you know, that might have inspired me a little to, to do um, some more colours and stuff in my work. Um, but, you know, like you said, I have, I have had good people around me. Uh, we, we don't really think of that until we get older and start looking back. Exactly, man. You know, even, my old, my, even my old amateur coach, right? Listen to this. My old amateur coach, which was, this is quite interesting because when I look back at growing up, you know, when you're growing up as a kid, you know, I I was always, um, I think things are a bit different now, but I was very, uh, you know, my dad was a real work, working man, work, yeah. a man's, you know. Um, so I had, the first thing I did was a Sunday paper round. Sunday, it was a big round as well. I'd made, you know, £15 on a Sunday, which is, you know, that was a good, that's amazing. When we were but then, <laughs> yeah, but that was like 1916, a big Sunday paper round. During the week, my old amateur coach had a, a chip shop. Uh, he was a businessman and he was my amateur, he was my boxing coach. So okay. to have him as a somebody to look up to who uh, run two, a couple of businesses, uh, I would be in his chip shop in the week in the back taking the eyes out of the spuds. I would be down his pallet business yard on a weekend, repairing pallets. I would be running down, running back um, to earn to earn that money to go and, you know, yeah. for myself, to buy, to buy myself something. So, you know, I, I always um, wanted to succeed, I guess, and, and, and earn my earn my living. So you've always been a grafter, basically. Yeah, I think so. That's that well. That was that was definitely there, you know. It was my dad as well, you know. Yeah. So um, that was a, that was a good thing, and then obviously I started the the the, the arm of the box, and I started doing quite well. I fell in the sport, to be honest. So literally fell in love with it. Um, and then that's where obviously I didn't leave college yet until '95. So it was a a very a time where I was thinking I wasn't sure what to do you know I wasn't sure whether to go into boxing and, and, and give it a shot because I could hit I, I wasn't a great boxer but I could finish a fight yeah. so I was very uh, and I know Enzo would have I would have turned pro with Enzo if I, if I had done it because um, he had a good he had a good um, there at the time see I was I was thinking of it in two ways in a, in a business sense I was thinking of turning pro because I could, because of the painting side of it, I thought it'd be a good, great story, you know, this guy turning pro and, but it, but my hands are killing to be honest, Jack and I and I, I didn't do it in the end because of that really. It was just playing on my mind so much, and I think if you're not hundred percent focused on going for that, I think you'll end up becoming a journeyman, and that's something I, yeah, something I didn't want really. I suppose it knocks your confidence as well. Like if I didn't have my full being committed to what I was doing at that moment in time, then I would 100% not feel confident. And I suppose if, you're, if art was the big picture, which it obviously and evidently is, when you look back, you made the best decision of your life because perhaps if you... Well, it, 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 it was, and I, and I there's oh. little regrets there though because I, I, you know, it does open doors. You know, yeah. it, it would have opened doors in a, in a, in a different way maybe. But... It is what it is, and uh, you know I'm happy that uh, things have gone the way they have. You know, when I'm go on, sorry. So you started boxing 
was that was obviously after you started painting because you said you started late you started painting you got an a in your art and your gcses and stuff painting that's all my life you know i was a kid starting as a kid like drawing and yeah so, so you've always painted so then you progressed over then to boxing was there any other work in between any jobs you said you worked with your boxing coach and stuff but going into adolescent stage was you a full-time artist or was there other jobs that came with it i started off um you know, I started off uh, as a self-employed at 95 and left college, lived at home with my mum and dad. They supported me. Uh, they were great. They didn't take anything off me. I started a, a business startup grant in 19, around 95, 96, I think, a business startup grant with the, the Prince's Trust. So they were giving me so much per week and then any, anything else then I earned was, was mine. In art as well. well be, be, art. Sorry? In the business, yeah, just art. Art. Yeah. business startup grant, yeah. It just had a grant, it's like the weekly grant. It wasn't great, but it was something to, to keep me going, you know. Yeah. Um, and it was difficult because to be, you know, art is difficult anyway, you've got to make a name for yourself. And I was that was why I was unsure what to do with it, with, with, with turning pro and stuff, yeah. But um, it gradually went on from there, and I, and I ended up. To be honest, though, I, I, I thought, well, what else do I enjoy doing? I really enjoyed working with kids. Um, and I think around 90, 97, I started, I started to think, well, all my mates, to be honest, you, were teachers, engineers, business, uh, managers of stores, and they were all earning good money. And I, and I wanted to earn more money. Um, so I thought, well, what else do I enjoy? I enjoyed working with kids. So that's what I started to go down into. I started to work with youngsters. I then started to work with young offenders, nice. as well as Love as it. well as painting, as well as painting, you know. But then I, I then landed a good uh, role in a school, um, and I was there for ten years. But to be honest, Jack, I never I never left this dream. I never I never left because I always had this talent. So when I was, was working full time in the school, I made a point of exhibiting regularly, whether that was, and to be honest, what I started doing was exhibiting at amateur boxing shows. I remember seeing uh, Because it. I was, yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I was exhibiting a lot of amateur boxing shows. I was exhibiting, but then that developed then into professional boxing shows, exhibiting at professional boxing shows. And then, and then I was just, Getting any opportunity that I could find. If there was an opportunity there, if it was an evening with whoever, um, I would call the promoter up and say, "Sorry." You just active consistently all the time. I was looking. I was looking for the work, you know. And then I was made redundant ten years later, around two thousand and nine, which was perfect because what it what it meant. Wait one second before we go any further. There's a massive point you've made here that I just want the viewers to know. You said there was a time in your career where you saw all your friends progressing, earning money, probably earning a little bit more than you, but you kept the passion oh, without and desire. How important is that burning passion and desire to succeed in life? Even when, even when the, that's a distraction. You know, you see all your friends doing well. I've been in positions myself where I've looked, I've made mistakes in my life. I've looked at everyone progressing. But then obviously the passion for what I wanted to achieve is always what's kept me there. What, how important is that to life? Well, it's very important. I think they all, all the big entrepreneurs will say that if we haven't got our passion for something, it's, 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 cause it's hard. You know, I've been, I've been, see what people don't see. The only, the only thing with Instagram, things like that, people just see the good stuff. They don't see the, the, the struggle, you know, and it's quite, it's funny in that sense because even though I call it a struggle, it isn't a struggle for me because I enjoyed every part of it. Your and when I look back, yeah, when I look back on that, although, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. It's a, it's a, I enjoyed all that, you know, trying to get through and, and, and coming up, you know, it, it, it's a good thing. But, yeah. but I, because of the passion, because I enjoyed what I was doing, it didn't matter. You were willing uh, to I'll give an example. I, I could travel. I could, if somebody could say to me, or oh, Pat, I got an event with so-and-so up in London. Do you want to come up and do a live piece? I'd be brilliant, you know. I I go up to London. I go wherever. And as a matter of fact, as I the time I was made redundant, I had landed a nice little 
role with a company called Champions UK. Now, Champions UK were an event company that were doing events all over Britain. And what I was doing, we had set up a deal where I would, they would cover my expenses, they would cover the travel, they would put me up, and I would go to the event and do a live piece, and we would auction it at the end of the night. Yeah. And that was quite a nice little thing. But that happened just as I was being made redundant. So it was perfect. And like a time in. Another great Yeah, thing. so but but a but example of that would be so I go to an event and I try, I go all the way to the, to the event. I could be driving for two two hour, two and a half hours, and the thing does an auction or it doesn't get the price that I was hoping for. Yeah. And so, you know, but I would never look at that as a bad as a negative thing. A I'd always look at what happened. I'd always look at what happened that night, what what images I got, what photographs I got that I could put into the press that you know that could be used in the future. I never really looked at it as a as a bad thing. So how important is advertisement? I know it's it's a question, yeah, which goes without saying, but obviously from an artist, you stand out as a person anyway, because what you're doing is so neat, so unique, sorry, but even from a unique perspective of someone which already <laughs> Like, like you say, any content that you could gather from that night, even though you didn't make the sale on the night, you still had those images in the bank ready to push out just to keep consistent content in everyone's <coughs> You know? Yeah, I think it's important. You know, some people would disagree, but I think there's a guy, um, I love the guy called, um, oh, what's his name? Goodness me, it's already gone blank now. Um, Anyway, he puts the message out all the time that, you know, if you're not known, you're not going to get any business. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. You need, to be known, you need to be known before you can, so you need to have a presence. 100%. Grant, Car Grant Cardone. Yeah, yeah. And he was making a point. He was making a point of being known. If you're I not. I hate him, he's known. <clears throat> yeah, so that, that's a good point, you know, if you're not out there. And I mean... The problem is that the market is flooded with everything. So you got, but you know, if you if you if you if you've got something that people like, and you you're gonna create a following, yeah. you know, and that's the people that's the people that will come back as well. If you've got people that buy something, they they're gonna come back and buy more. I agree, but but do you, do you believe like for me, I, I I look at when when there's an industry that's flooded, right? It's diluted. So when you've got a great concept, when you have that concept, it's easier to stand out in an industry that is flooded. Like the hairdressing industry right now is absolutely, yeah. you know, but as long as you're doing things like those tiny millimeters that we spoke about in our first meeting in Frankie and Benny's years ago, as long as we continue to do those things, it's easier for, for us to shine because there's such a That's good point. You know, I, I don't think we should be a scale or, or we should be frightened of something just because it's, massively diluted and massively populated you know we can use that adva our advantage use the advantage is a good point perfect so mate right, right now like that, mate. right now what you're doing yeah you're working on what you love to do right now what are you painting right now it's actually to be honest i started a while back um but it's actually um a piece of tyson fury the gypsy king yeah but it's actually it's, it's his victory I was really inspired by his um, his victory of uh, against Deontay Wilder, the last one. Yeah, man. Do you want me to flick this round or flick it round after or what? Yeah, flick it round, mate. Let's have a look. Let's just flick this round then. Or is going backwards now? In a second, we'll get on to the people that you've actually met and known. But just to open up the conversation, you, you've met Tyson Fury in person a couple of times, right? Yeah, I've met... Uh, luckily, yeah. Uh, a variety of um, of the fighters, and uh, you know, a lot of them have signed my stuff. And you know, it's not finished. I'm working on this now. I got a lot of stuff to do, but it's the victory. Can you see that? Absolutely, mate. So, so like th this now. How how many years is this into your career? Well, I've been I've been painting since you know since I was a you know very uh, young. It's a mess in you as well. Let me just turn that around. <laughs> You're a typical artist, mate. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, I've been, I've been at this since, uh, you know, like I said, since 95, I left uni. 
Um, but so a long, a long time, Jack. You know, it started before then. You still the, love it. If, you uh, still love it right of now. Course, of course, of course, of course. I wouldn't say I, I don't. Um, I love what I do, and I love all the aspect of it. But it's, it's it's more than just painting. You know, it's the life as well that comes with it's it. A, it's it's it, it's a lot more than than, than just painting. So, 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 you know, so, so let's say now, yeah, right, it's fight night, you've been flown to Vegas, because this is a real life scenario for you, because this is actual, this is the life you live. It's fight night now, you've flown to Vegas, there's a massive fight going on, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, what, what's it like, what's it like when you arrive, talk us through the process of when you get there, what is said to you, where you go with security, like what, what's it like when you see the atmosphere and you're actually a part of the event? Like, because I've I've been to boxing fights, yeah. Well, I've, to be honest, it, it's a it's a it's quite a because people want to come with me. I don't want that because you know I'm very um, it's not it's not straightforward. You know, it's um, you know, they, like you said, there is a lot of security. There is a lot of and sometimes I'm not part of that. You know, I'm going to exhibit my work, and I. <laughs> The, the reason why I don't want anybody with me is all on my mind is just work. Yeah. People think I might be going for a jolly. I'm not going for a jolly. Yeah, I'm going to exhibit and a try to, um, you know, establish myself more and just put it out there more. Mm. And, you know, I'm trying to, you know, usually when I get over it, I tend to, I get to my place wherever I'm staying. And I, and I usually, I want to get, I want to get the information on the fight week. I want to find out what's happening on those days. And the recent one was quite interesting because they had a lot of things going on within the MGM Grand. And they had, like, First Take was doing a lot of, um, was doing a lot of clips and, 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 and a lot of uh, interviews with people. So I took that opportunity. You know, I wasn't invited to that, but I took an opportunity where I went over to see the First Take people and I spoke to the, to the um, a couple of times, and I said, "Look, I've done this piece. Can we get it on? Can we get it on the show?" So she said, "Yeah, turn turn up tomorrow." She said, "7 a.m. in the morning, or it might have been 6 a.m. in the morning." I was there on time. I said, "Oh, look, I was told to come around, and you know, and I'd be able to." She said, "Oh, brilliant!" She said, "She took me straight over to the part Andre Ward. We put my piece on an easel. It wasn't the original painting I had done for the fight, but it was a it was a it was an actual canvas edition signed by both of them. And me and Andre Ward were on first take live in the USA, just pointing at my canvas edition. And uh, How, did that, feel? Up to the How did that feel? Well, it was great. It was great because, <laughs> because when I walked around after, there was people going to me, I just seen you on first take. So it was, it was great, you know, because, you know, a lot of people are seeing that program. Yeah, it's amazing. But again, again, Jack, if I didn't take the opportunity and, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. If I didn't go over and say, look, come, you know, do you fancy doing this? I didn't, I didn't put pressure on them and say, oh, look, you know, show my painting. I obviously went over and said, oh, is there someone in charge I can have a chat with? And so, you know, when she come over, I said, look, I've done this piece. Uh, it'd be great if we could put it on the show. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then two days later or a day later, there was another show and they were doing an interview with, Deontay and Tyson, and it it was actually placed. It was like product placement. They placed it right at the front of the uh, show, so that was on America TV as well. So that was good. But um, during that week, Tyson was doing a live signing session, and he was doing a live say, say, signing session at the store that I was. Um, painting live and exhibiting my work, which was uh, the Art of Music Store, wow. um, which is just before the MGM Grand Arena. So it's a perfect place because everybody goes to walk, walk past it. And so I took the opportunity. I knew I heard that Tyson was coming. Um, I hadn't done anything at this stage. And I said to the, the guy, I said, look, you know, could I do a live piece of Tyson as... Um, as he's doing his signing. I said, he's going to be under the people queuing up. They got some of the watch as they're queuing. Perfect. And the lady goes, she, she goes, oh, well, I haven't got a problem with it. You better ask so-and-so. So I asked the guy, he said, yeah, great, Pat. I knew on the Wednesday that um, he was coming in on the Friday, 
Well, I had the all clear on the Wednesday that he was coming on the Friday. As soon as I we had, as soon as I had the clear, off I went to get my my materials, my canvas, and I was painting in my pants in my room. See, this is the glamorous <laughs> bit that nobody sees. I was going to say. So I was then, I, I was then, I was then, I then, I then made a start. You know, I made a start on the piece. Yeah. And then I continued to paint it live over two days, yeah. and it was great because Tyson walks in and sees it, and he's like, and he was chuffed that I was doing it as well. And it was just a great, great what, opportunity for me. What was the conversation like? What was the conversation like? Well, it was very brief and very quick, but it was great because he looks at it and he goes, man, that's my first fight. That's awesome. Who did that? And I like, I said, Mike, it's me. And I had my bloody brush on my hand and my paint. I said, Mike, it's me. But bear in mind, all the bodyguards around him, massive kill, and he's rushing through. And he's like, man, that's awesome. Gives me a fist pump, grabs my hand, crushes it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but it was just nice. It was just lovely for him yeah. to see that. The only thing I want, I wanted a bit of footage because I wanted to ask Mike what it was like, what would, what he felt like at that time. Because it was the painting of his first fight. It was just moments before his first professional fight, and with Castamalo looking down at him. Yeah, well, that would have meant just, so much for him, based on the documentaries that you see today. Well, it, 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 it was, but I, want, I wanted him on camera. I wanted him to, so I wanted to ask Mike, I wanted to say, Mike, what was you feeling at this moment? I knew what he was feeling, but I didn't get it on camera. But he just said to me he was nervous, really nervous. Because I obviously, when I had it signed, I obviously asked Mike, you know, what I couldn't film it, but I asked him what, you know, what it was like those moments. And he just said he was really nervous. And because, you know, yeah. That's what it's like boxing. You know, even though you think, you know, they're scared. They, they, they're scared. The fear of losing. That's what it is. It's not fear. Of, it's fear of losing and looking crap. Of course. And, it, fear and, and, and they got such a big job to do. You think of how many of us are spending thousands of pounds. Like, like me, my brother, our network, yourself. I love boxing. Like, like it's, as soon as yeah. the boxing's on TV, everything in the world stops, you know. <laughs> you have a day off. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the holy grail, you know. <laughs> So yeah. can you imagine the job that these people have got. They fight in. They they're not only fighting because they love it. They're entertaining the world. And I watched a recent documentary about Kobe Bryant when he says like we have to yeah. um, what happens with hundred degree fevers. No matter what happens, we're on a stage. Yeah, yeah. They see us, you know. So yeah, I watched that. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, it was such a really great, inspiring guy. Oh, I mean, it was, it's so sad what happened there. It was. It's awful, man. It is, man. Unbelievable. But, but but after you met Mike then that day when you said you you started in your pants you started the uh, <laughs> you started doing not the... not not like not like in my room <laughs> I was going to say like, <laughs> when no, when nobody else is you be on the camera my my my, 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 quiet, my quiet time you know <laughs> but like obviously after that then you met Tyson how far was that in to your career when you'd started painting these celebrity fighters like who was the first when well, you well, it was 95. I was commissioned by Empress Car Sales. Empress Car Sales was um, here. Uh, they were the big sponsors of ITV Boxing at the time. Okay. Um, so 1995 would have been the first, you know, big on a Steve Robinson. Steve Robinson was our Wales world champion. Yeah. Um, but I didn't really start to get, you know, you. I love the saying, you know, you, you're... Um, you know, life begins outside the comfort zone and you've got that, that circle and that inner circle and the other circle and a little circle and it says life begins here, you know. 100%. Because everything everything outside, you know, I'm comfortable now in my, in my studio and I wouldn't say I'm 100% comfortable talking to you, but I think it's great. It's something that we need to do for our careers and I think it's a good thing. Absolutely. And you get more confident the more you do that. You get more confident anyway. Yeah, man. Maybe. But... When you get outside that comfort zone, and it's a, it's a good saying because it does create, you know, you are, don't get me wrong, I land, you know, when you land, when I land in Vegas, because I'm not 100% certain what's going to happen. What I do know, I know that I'm going to meet a lot more people or new people that could, as we said earlier about those connecting the dots, could lead to something. So, you know, I, I find, I find it really, if I push myself out of the comfort zone, I do, that's why I enjoy the traveling. You know, I don't, you know, I, I, I'm not, um, it's not, it's not a holiday. 
uh, don't get me wrong, you know, you obviously uh, meet with friends, like you meet with people that I've met before, and but uh, there's always that thing in the back of my mind is where where could this go? So although it's work, though, I know me and you have talked on a friendship level. I know you've got some great stories about the nightlife in Vegas. What, what, what stories can you share with us about, obviously, like work's your priority, but just for people which haven't got the luxury, like this is not an everyday thing we're talking here. No, no, you're the only person I know which gets flown to Vegas. You meet Mike Tyson, Tyson Fury, Floyd Mayweather, all these people, you know. What's, what's, what's it like after you congratulate yourself? Because you have to take some sort of trophy. You have a good day, you get some good painting done, you build your network. What's the nightlife like in Vegas? Talk me through it. How long have we got? Well, you, I, <laughs> I, think, I, think you, I think you'd be surprised, mate. I don't, I don't really... Um, I'm not really one... I don't go to the club in. I'm going to bore you, know, because I don't really go to the clubs. <laughs> it's only once, it only, it only once it happened. And actually, it was quite funny because it did lead to a painting. The limousines and um, yeah, that yeah, was that you. was the one. That was the one time that it was just amazing, an amazing. Uh, and I, that could only happen in Vegas, man. That <laughs> could happened? only happen in Vegas. Tell us. Tell well, us. I, I just I walked out of the Bellagio, and um, somebody was getting out of a, a limousine. I said, "Can I take a photograph?" And the, the the girl was from the UK as well. She said, "Take a photograph." She said, "You're coming with us." But don't get me wrong. I knew it was safe because there was children in the limousine. Okay. So, you know, she, I got in the limousine. They started giving me fill. <laughs> started giving me fill. And I'm somebody that doesn't really drink. But yeah. bearing in mind, I just, I just thought this was going to last <laughs> until, the next, until the next stop. But we go to uh, the next stop was somewhere like, I think, Lasagna, Lasagna Frogs. And we ended up, they just ended up plastering me with more. And the kids were still there, but, but, then the then the guy one guy took the kids back to the hotel and then they ended up going to another um another party. This was late in the afternoon mind. Yeah. And I think we ended up then or we ended up singing karaoke for quite some time. So you could tell I'd had a drink. <laughs> and then we ended up going to this nightclub pool pool party with Marshmallow there, the, the DJ. Um that was nuts because I had gone with a this client, I won a client at the time. They but I had gone with this client. Kidnapped. Yeah, I, I had gone with this. But listen to this. I had gone. It was a massive queue. And I'm talking, this was one of the best nightclubs in Vegas, right? Or po- with a pool party. Um, and I literally, well, we don't queue because they just go straight to the front and they get us straight in. Um, and then we, they got this booth. And the, you know, the booth was. I think I was five thousand dollars for the booth. I didn't. I didn't put. Any, I didn't put anything out. But um, and then we had champagne, and it was just nuts. Um, but you know what a night. I mean, I was the worst I felt in the morning for a damn long time. I had steak and eggs in the morning because I had to have it. I ran. I ran to a local restaurant. I felt like I had to do something because I was hungover, and I and I don't get hungover to be honest. But that's just very. Uh, that doesn't happen very often, Jack. To be honest, for me. Especially out, out there. I mean, usually if I might go for a nice food in the evening, I might be going back to my room. As I said, I might be going back to my room late. Pain. Yeah, man. But but you know? is, there, is there anywhere, just in your experience, you'd recommend in Vegas? Like, what's your favourite places? Too many. There's loads of places, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, even going to the to the hotels is a really good feature. I mean, you can go to like the Bellagio, go into like the um the win that's the the most expensive and and in the win he's got some amazing artwork by Jeff Koons he's got the Popeye statue by Jeff Koons which he paid I think he paid thirty five million I wow. think I might be wrong I think it was thirty thirty million dollars that he paid for the statue of Popeye and it's Popeye doing his yeah um. But um, I mean, to be honest, it's, 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 I, I really do like Vegas. I, I, it's a, you know, it's, it's a good place just, just to even, just to chill, you know, and relax. I know what, and, and like I said, I'm not one to, um, I'm not one for partying, nightclubbing, but there's a lot, obviously, that, a lot of that goes on as well, yeah. you know. But back, back to the fighters then, mate, yeah. Like you've met some, 
I can't believe some of the photos that you post up. I'm thinking this is incredible. You know, it's absolutely incredible. Like, like Floyd Appreciate Mayweather. It, I mean, it's incredible and it's so inspiring. And that's one of the biggest reasons I wanted you to come on. It's like, I'm so passionate about being from Wales. I love it, you know? Yeah. And if anyone can't understand what we're saying, we're going to put subtitles underneath. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what the is I'm so passionate about my country. I love it. And to see someone else, which is like from my country, just going out and see. Yeah, we're not, I mean, and we're not far away from each other, really. So, you know. Yeah, I, th- I think you've overtaken me, bro. <laughs> no, I mean, we're not far away where we live, you know. It was right on the doorstep. Literally 20-minute drive, isn't it, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, like, so, so say now you, you're in Vegas, yeah? Like, you, you've met, in my opinion, other people might not say, but literally one of the greatest boxers of all time, proven, Floyd Mayweather, you know? Like, he is literally every single guy out there, whether you put a bad status about him or not, you love him really, yeah. you have to, you know? For me, yeah, yeah. Biggest inspirations on the planet. He's absolutely smashed it. He's so composed. He does everything he says he's going to do. You know, what's it like to actually talk to a guy like that? I would do anything to speak to someone like that. To be honest, mate, I was in London. Really? I had an opportunity to, uh, yeah, yeah, I had an opportunity to paint live in London wow. uh, on a show that uh, he was over. Yeah. And it was great because presenting, I presented uh, Mayweather the piece of him and Pacquiao stayed on. Yeah, and it was it was really nice because often you see Mayweather very um, people look at him and think he's arrogant, think he's very. I tell you what, when I presented him with that piece, he was very um, he was taken aback. Uh, he was just you know he didn't show that he was um, oh another one or whatever. You know he was like he was really pleased to have it. I could tell. And that was that was a nice moment for me, you know. Yeah, man. And then later on, then he he come up, he come up, actually he come up to me then, and, and like as he was going in, he, he sort of put his hands on his sh- on my shoulders and said, "That's looking great, man. It's looking awesome." And and then I went up live on stage with that piece later, and he signed it. Um, Where is that piece now? But, oh, it's in some some collector's house somewhere. Yeah. 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 Do you, do, yeah. What's it like, mate, when you have to detach yourself from the paintings with such amazing memories? Depends if I if I like them, but but I mean at the end of the day, I got to make a living, and um, yeah, you know, I like I like I like it when there's a story behind it as well. If um if there's a piece and um, and if there's a st- well, there's a story behind all pieces, um, but you know that's even it's even better for me. To, I, I'm proud if somebody's got it on their wall and they want to. You know they want want to buy my work. I'm so proud of that, yeah, and yeah. it's um it's a nice feeling to be honest, mate. Because it goes, again, it, it it's not necessarily actually that's an that's an important thing is where. To be honest, with you a lot of people would think that selling that painting or in peace would be the finished thing, and that would be I would be that's what it's all about. But to be honest, with you, it's the build up, it's the build up of producing it, exhibiting it. And then, you know, obviously, if I sell it, that's great. But it's it's everything before. It's pro- everything that happens before. It's, the a process. Journey. it's a journey, isn't the it? The process, the process, Gary V says all the time, the process far outweighs the outcome. 100%. I completely It's agree. a nice saying. You know, because it's, it's funny because, like, the feeling you get from an affirmation when you think about something and when you actually have it is the same, but you can never feel what the journey's like unless you're in the process. And that's one thing mm-hmm. that, like, every... I'm, I'm the same with my projects I'm doing. Like, I absolutely love the chase. I love the journey. I love the blood yeah. and tears. And it's, and it's like now, like, like me and you are doing certain things in our career. Like you said earlier on, with you, you like working with the ex-offenders and stuff. I'm about to go to town on that now, which is a massive thing you yep. probably want to get involved in. You know? Right, but it, right. Like you say, like once you've got the ending goal, it's so important to just like look at the journey and then it makes you want to give back to people. You know, because like, yeah. like you say, the yeah. whole point of Genius Network here right now is literally to expose people to exactly what you've done, people like yourself, and the importance of connecting the points, like you said, like each stepping stone and where it leads to. And like you imagine if one of those stones were taken away, how much different we have been, you know, being in the right place, mm-hmm. right time and perfect precision execution. 
just making sure that you're constantly active. All this stuff people say about, oh yeah, but you get lucky, but you really have to be active to make your own luck. You know? It, it, well, I, listen, I, you know, pre preparation, preparation plus opportunity equals luck. It's, exactly, it's, man. It's, uh, that's one of the that's one of the greatest sayings. Absolutely. You know, it's not it's no people will say to me, "Oh, I was lucky," and then lucky at all, oh, because I mean, I I prepared and I've created an opportunity to create the luck, and that happens a lot. Hundred percent. I'm with but, you. Hundred percent. So many people will say to so many people, "You're you're you're just lucky," but but the harder you work, the lucky you get, right? Exactly. I do like that saying a lot as well. Yeah, man. So how's the piece coming, brother? Slow, to be honest, Jack. Yeah. I um yeah, it's a uh, matter of fact. I was working on um. Do you like know Gary V? Yeah, I do. He's a genius. He's a genius. Uh, I do like him. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was working on a piece of him. Um. Like, well, the last couple of days, funny enough. Um. Just to um. Just wanted to do something. Because he's always inspiring me, you know, little messages there, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to do something. Yeah, man. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. It might be, it might look different. I was just backwards. Grab it, mate. Cool. You can see the stuff in the background as well. Where wow, that's awesome, mate. Stop comparing yourself to others. Yeah, mate. That's amazing. Honestly. Pat, I love your work, mate. Honestly, it's it's so good. It's backwards on it. Stop here. No, no, it's it's, it's fine. Powers. No, no, it's, it's fine. For us. The... No, it's it's backwards for you, but not for us and our viewers. But but mate, just just before we close up now, like you're an artist, yeah, and I know you're inspired by boxing, but you do other things as well. I knew you did something for V Day not so long ago. You know, like like is, is it? Oh all... yeah, that was nice, man. Yeah. Is it, is it all based on just how you feel at one moment in time and that's what you're going to project? I think a lot of the times it is because a lot, a lot of the times I, I mean, this has been a little bit weird with the, um, the lockdown and stuff because inspiration, you know, I, I, I normally have a schedule um, that I might, I might want to, there might be an event happening where I want to do something for that event. And you know, with, with non events happening, that, that isn't there. So I haven't been inspired in that sense. So I've been I've been looking at my own thing. So Tom Tom Moore was an inspiration for me. It was yeah. the fact that it was when I saw him as a younger officer, um, not just as him as an older man doing the, the walk. And I think um I think that was inspiring for me to see him as an older a, a younger man, because he was a hero then going to war. And <clears throat> I was then all of a sudden, I was just inspired all of a sudden just to, to really capture that piece. And uh, I'd like, I, I'm glad to say that that's with the family now. Nice. Um, that, that went out um, a couple of days back. Uh, but I've had confirmation that they've received it and they're really over the moon with it. We're so, so lucky. That's a nice, um, oh, we're so lucky. Yeah, us today, especially people my age, we don't even realize how lucky we are that people like that existed. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like, exactly. it's, it's, it's nice that you can bring to life something that everyone should have full knowledge over you know yeah yeah Ooh, man. really nice cheer man appreciate it awesome but but before we end up and round this up mate what advice would you give to any young employee anyone self-employed entrepreneur someone wanting to get started just someone looking for something to desire in life what advice would you give them I think to be honest with you, just to follow their passion, whether whether that's an interest in something, you know, try and do something around that. But definitely networking. I think networking is a big is a big thing. We touched on it a few times in the conversation. I think it's a massive thing because and I would also say with this goes with networking, I guess, because my dad always said to me, he said, Pat, he said, Never burn your bridges, and he said, he said because, you know, you just never know, you you never know when you, and I think that's a good, and I've never been, um, you know, I've never been, I've never dissed anybody in in that sense, in in a way that they wouldn't want to, um, you know, work with me again or do something, you know, there's no point because you'd always, what's that? You always leave your doors open. No one can ever close yeah, them. Yeah, because. Yeah, because you might always you might always want to ask them for something, or you might need to um, 
you know, you just might need them someday, not 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 to do anything for you, but it might lead to something. It might connect again somewhere. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Love it, mate. Honestly, mate, it's such a pleasure to have you on. You, you're my, one of my greatest friends I've ever met. It's amazing. You, should, man. you know, like what you've done since our conversation when we first met those years ago. And again, I'm glad that I networked. What year was that, then? What year was that? I think it was 2015 or 16. No, no, it wasn't. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would, it would have been at least, it would have been at least that. It was three years back. Is that 2016? It was definitely 2016. In Frankie and Benny's. I'm sure we can dig a photo out somewhere. In, uh, um, so had I, had, I gone to, um, had I gone to Vegas then? Yeah. I've yeah, had... I, think I, I think I'd gone to Canelo Khan. I think that was actually one of the first yeah. times that I'd gone over. It was the first time you'd gone yeah. over. We, we spoke just after you came back. And now, how many times has it been now? What do you mean? Oh, I've been over a few times, yeah, yeah. Um, Regular thing for you now, isn't it? Yeah, well, I just, you know, I, I, I'm, I just want to, I just want to get out there, you know. Yeah, mate. This, this create, lot- create, create your own opportunities. Absolutely, man. I we'll love it. But mate, uh, what we'll do, we're going to put some links below, so any of you that want to connect with Patrick, you can connect with him. I'm sure you'll be happy to take any questions off this. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Genius Network. This is Patrick John Killian. As I said, if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, please just do so to stay in touch with amazing people like this gentleman. Thank you so much, Pat. You're a gent. Appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot, mate. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Stay safe. Take care.